What's up everybody, Nate back with another video. For those of you new to the channel, I own a custom integration company, meaning I help people implement tech into their homes and businesses. Today, I just got back from a quick install that I have some footage from. It was cold, not a nice day out here in New England, but that's okay, we were inside getting it done for this client. This is a new construction house where the electrician ran all of the cat cables and we were called in to come and terminate the network. This was phase one of the install, so we did go and we pulled some extra speaker cable for some exterior speakers that are gonna be powered by a Sonos amp, which you will see in the video. The phase two of this install, we will come in after the flooring and the paint guys are all in. Typically, we are the last trade out of a house. But quick install, I wanted to make sure you guys got a video for this week, so I hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's dive into what we are doing for this client. So like I've done in previous videos, I will show you the proposal and kind of the behind the scenes on the sales side of how we work out what products that client's gonna get based off the consultation that we have with them. Every client that we work with, we give them a free consultation, whether it is at their home um, or in our dedicated showroom that we have. For this client, it's a new construction house, so he came to the showroom to take a look around at some of the products that he may want. Uh, may, the first one being the Samsung frame. Uh, we have one on display here. They are very popular um, in general, but definitely in this area. He had a beautiful fireplace built, and normally I'm pretty against doing a TV above a fireplace. It's not my favorite, it's just in general too high. Um, but for this house, he had it low enough that it, it made sense and it was the only logical spot to put it. We do the Sanus um, or Legrand 17 inch box. So something to remember if you are going to go with the Samsung Frame TV, anything above, I believe it is the 43 inch you're going to need a 17 inch box because everything above that comes with the very large one connect box. Um, and if you wanna store that all behind the TV, 17 inch is the minimum that you will need to fit that box in there. This customer also went with a um, gold or beige frame for their Samsung frame. That it will be part of phase two. So what I talked about in the beginning of the video, this was phase one of the installation. Um, we typically do a phase one and phase two on any new construction where we come in and we terminate what we can. Um, like today, we, you'll see that we are working in the basement where it doesn't matter, we're not in anyone else's way and we're getting things prepped. Phase two is typically all your trim work. So a lot of this product is gonna be phase two. So customer ended up going with a Sonos Arc to go um, on the mantle underneath the Samsung frame, and that will be paired with a Gen 3 Sonos subwoofer, the full size. In the video today, you will see us run this wiring. Uh, we ended up using 14.2 wire for these two exterior surface mount speakers. This is our pretty standard uh, episode outdoor speaker. We really like it. It sounds great. It's not overly intrusive. They look good. They come in white and black, which is a huge benefit. Uh, those outdoor speakers will be powered by a Sonos amp that you will see us install in the rack below. And then our standard network deployment. Um, again, we go with Ubiquity because it is easy for us to manage for clients. Nine out of 10 times, whether it's a residential or a commercial client, we are managing that network for them. So we use Ubiquity so that it's all in the same UI for us. This client, very small uh, network deployment, just a pretty basic setup. We were called in after the electricians had already put in the cat cable. So we are working with um, what is already existing. By the time we were called, the drywall was up, which is okay. Um, it's not an enormous house. I wanna say it was roughly 1,800 to 2,000 square feet. Two U6IWs will cover that home just fine. So we have the Dream Machine Pro that will be acting as our router. There are no cameras or anything. We ended up taking this out of the proposal, but we didn't end up doing a patch panel. Uh, there was only three drops. It really didn't seem necessary to patch it in. 
we typically would go with the UDM Pro SE in a, uh, in a deployment like this because the U6IW, that access point is PoE. The UDM Pro does not have any PoE ports on it. The SE, so the special edition version does. That is why you see some injectors on here. So what we ended up doing was plugging right off the Dream Machine Pro into an injector onto the drop going to the U6IW, which will get installed during trim out. And then everything, there was no reason for um, a UPS in this scenario. I mean, I guess arguably there's always a reason for a UPS, but that wasn't in the client's budget, it didn't make sense. So we ended up just doing a rack mount power strip by Wattbox. We like these specifically because they have trigger switches on the front. We label them nice and neat for the client. So if anything stops working, uh, they can go down and they can flip that switch on and off very easily. It's right in the front. You will see it in the video there. Uh, so that is the kind of the behind the scenes of the proposal side. And here is the install side. So the first thing that you are going to see us do is mounting, measuring, and pre-drilling to mount this Tecmojo 6U rack onto the concrete wall using concrete anchors. As always, the rack is linked in the description below. This is our favorite rack for these smaller installations. It's incredibly cost effective. Uh, it comes built in with a fan, which I do suggest replacing purely just because it's pretty loud. Um, you will notice, and I'm sure some people will comment, but in our area, network equipment is not required to be on a backer board, similar to how the electrical panel there is. Always a good day when we get to be with our electrical partners on the same site. So this house, like I had mentioned in the intro, there was only three Cat6 drops run in the home. They did both TV locations, and then they also did a single keystone in an office, hence why we were using the U6IW. But here you see Pat is just gonna go ahead and terminate those existing cat lines into some keystones so that we can plug them directly into the UDM. As I mentioned before, we did not end up doing a patch panel on this purely just because it was only three cables. It didn't make a ton of sense. Uh, we did end up adding in more speaker drops into this rack, which you kind of see here. Uh, this was me working with some of the other guys to get those wires pulled while Pat continues to work on terminating and cleaning up the network side. So here you'll see him putting in that watt box with those switches. Like I mentioned, we really like to use this because it just it helps eliminate um, issues when it's not a network controlled power conditioner. So something goes down or it's not working, it's pretty easy for us to walk the client through walking, going down and just flipping that switch on and off. Um, as some of you may know, rebooting things does fix it a lot of the time. This is a very clean little install. So that Sonos amp is gonna power those exterior speakers. They were being run with 14.2 speaker cable. And as you can see, everything is nice and labeled, very clean. I hope you enjoy this quick little install video. Stay tuned for more.